It's easy to think the global chip war is just a battle of technology, supercomputers, AI breakthroughs, and nanometer bragging rights. But what's happening right now goes way beyond that. This isn't just about who makes the smartest chips. It's about who controls the world's ability to function. Because without the humble semiconductors, the ones we don't even notice, our phones, cars, hospitals, and power grids simply stop working. And right now, China holds the keys to that power. This story isn't taking place in Silicon Valley or Shenzhen, but in a quiet corner of Europe, in the Netherlands. And what happened there in late 2025 has just pulled Europe straight into the heart of a new supply crisis that could decide the future balance of economic power. Before we dive in, if you find value in stories that cut through the noise and help explain the forces shaping our world, give this video a quick like and share. It helps more people discover our work and keeps the conversation alive. Now, let's get into it. In October 2025, Dutch authorities made a decision they thought was smart and safe. They forced a Chinese-owned semiconductor company, Nexperia, to sell off its operations in the Netherlands. The reason? National security. The goal was to protect Europe's critical tech infrastructure from foreign control. At least that's how it was framed. But what happened next revealed just how dependent Europe really is. Not on high-end AI chips or quantum processors, but on the everyday components that quietly keep the world running. Because Nexperia, though not a household name, turned out to be a critical piece of Europe's industrial backbone. Beijing saw the divestment as an economic attack, and its response was swift, precise, and deeply calculated. Within days, China flexed its muscles in a way few expected, by showing just how easily it could disrupt the flow of essential components that keep Western factories alive. Europe's defensive move had triggered a chain reaction, one that exposed its own vulnerability. So who exactly is Nexperia? It's not a flashy tech giant. It doesn't build AI chips or design futuristic processors. It makes what are called discrete semiconductors, small power management chips that regulate current, control voltage, and protect circuits. Unseen, uncelebrated, yet absolutely essential. Every car engine, every smartphone, every medical device depends on them. Without these little chips, even the most advanced systems grind to a halt. Nexperia started as part of Philips before being spun off and later acquired by China's WingTech, a company closely tied to Beijing's industrial strategy. So when the Dutch government moved to cut it off, they weren't just targeting a single company. They were challenging an entire supply chain that stretches deep into China's industrial heartland. And here's the bigger picture most people miss. The real chip war isn't about who can build the most advanced processor. It's about who controls the supply of the basic components that the modern world can't live without. China quietly dominates that space. It now produces roughly 60% of the world's discrete semiconductors and more than 70% of passive components like resistors and capacitors. So even when you buy a European or American chip, there's a good chance it was made, packaged, or sourced from China. The uncomfortable truth is that Western nations depend heavily on the very system they're trying to contain. The consequences are already being felt, especially in the auto industry. Bosch, one of Europe's top suppliers, warned that if Chinese companies delay or halt chip shipments, car factories could shut down in weeks. And we've seen what happens when chip supply falters. Remember 2021? A single fire at a Japanese chip plant caused a global car shortage and a 10% drop in output. Now imagine that, multiplied by a thousand, if China turns off the tap. Meanwhile, Western governments keep focusing on the prestige projects, those futuristic chip plants for AI and quantum computing. Billions are being poured into advanced fabs that won't be operational for years. But the current crisis isn't about the future. It's about right now. It's like building rockets for Mars while you've run out of screws for the launch pad. Europe's flagship policy, the CHIPS Act, proudly funds cutting-edge 3 nanometer technologies. But that doesn't help when car makers in Germany can't find a 50-cent power chip to keep production lines moving. China, on the other hand, played the long game. While the West chased prestige, Beijing invested in control. Control over the low- and mid-tier chips that every industry needs to function. It's the same strategy it used for rare earth minerals, where it now controls more than 80% of global refining. In 2010, when China merely hinted it might restrict rare earth exports, global markets panicked. Today, it could do the same with semiconductors, and the impact would be far greater. 
because without those simple chips, everything stops. From ambulances to airports, from hospital equipment to defense systems. That's real leverage, and China knows it. Its power doesn't come from launching sanctions or sending warships, but from the quiet ability to delay, restrict, or reorganize shipments of parts that the West can't do without. One phone call from Beijing could freeze assembly lines in Munich, Detroit, or Birmingham. And that brings us to the political side of the story. When Donald Trump recently met Xi Jinping in a symbolic reset of trade relations, media outlets called it a breakthrough. China promised to ease some semiconductor restrictions. But look closer, and you'll see who's really in control. China agreed to allow exports of certain mid-tier chips, but only under strict conditions. Companies had to prove that their supply chains weren't tied to U.S. military use or sanctions. Beijing set the rules. Washington celebrated, but in reality, it was asking for air. And China was holding the oxygen tank. If you've made it this far, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Do you think Europe can realistically break free from this level of dependency? Or are we already too deep into China's industrial network to ever fully decouple? Your insights always make this channel richer. So share what you think below. Analysts say China's approach is deliberate. It gives just enough cooperation to keep global markets calm, but never enough to lose control. It's leveraged through flexibility. Meanwhile, the impact hits hardest at ground level, not in government halls, but in factories. Workers across Europe's auto and electronic sectors are feeling the ripple effects. Reduced hours, halted production, even layoffs. For them, this isn't geopolitical theory, so it's personal. When a shipment of chips is delayed, entire production lines freeze. Jobs hang in the balance. The Netherlands can nationalize Nexperia, but it can't recreate the factories that sit inside China. Germany, caught between US policy and Chinese influence, has quietly been lobbying Beijing to reopen supply lines. That's how deep the dependency runs. Europe's biggest economy now negotiates with China directly, bypassing Washington. What we're witnessing is not just a supply issue, it's a shift in global hierarchy. China no longer reacts to Western pressure. It dictates the pace of the global economy. And the West, for all its talk of resilience and independence, is discovering how fragile its position really is. When you can't produce the basic parts your industries rely on, technological leadership means very little. The lesson should have been learned from the rare earth crisis a decade ago. But here we are again, facing the same pattern. China secures the low value but essential materials. The West chases prestige and ends up vulnerable. The stakes couldn't be higher. Every sector, i.e. from healthcare to energy, depends on a stable chip supply. And as of now, that stability rests in Chinese hands. So what can the West do? It needs to rethink its entire approach to focus not just on advanced chips, but also on the bread and butter components that keep industries alive. It needs to invest in domestic production, diversify suppliers, and build real redundancy into its supply chains. And above all, it must learn to anticipate, not just react. Because in this new world, whoever controls the basic parts, he controls everything built upon them. This Nexperia crisis isn't a minor trade dispute. It's a turning point. It shows how economic power is shifting from innovation to interconnection. China has built a position where every disruption it causes sends shockwaves through Western economies. And while Europe and the US scramble to catch up, China quietly holds the switches that power the modern world. If you found this analysis valuable, make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss future breakdowns like this one. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned because the next chapter in this chip war is only just beginning.